Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this is a topic that I mentioned wanting to cover in my sampling video, so here we are. I already know because there's so many cases of song plagiarism or potential song plagiarism that this might be a topic that I cover in installments or at least in more than one video. So in this video, we'll cover a little bit of everything from cases where the case of plagiarism was resolved quietly between the artists or cases where it might have gone all the way to court, sometimes even more than once. And I will be focusing on more recent cases from pop music history, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the song that the artist may have plagiarized is also a recent one. And as we go through each, definitely be sure to let me know your thoughts on how similar the songs sound and based on the story, whether you agree that it was or wasn't plagiarism. Of course, I can't play the songs in the video due to copyright, but they are already linked in the description for you to give a listen. And before we get into it, we do need to take a word from today's sponsor, Factor. Okay, so I've already told you guys that I'm no chef, but I'm always looking for something good to eat but is quick and easy to make. I've talked to you guys in the past about HelloFresh and how they've made cooking painless. Well, Factor is now owned by HelloFresh, and with an even wider array of meal plans to choose from, there is definitely something for everyone. I love switching between both brands, and now you guys can enjoy both brands with me at a discount. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals so much easier by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs creates meals with ingredients with integrity, that way you are feeling your best all day long. And the absolute best part is that you get to skip the grocery store lines and skip the chopping and the prepping and the cleanup. Meals are prepared and ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, once it gets even a little bit warmer outside, I am out and about. And less time at home definitely means less time to cook or, you know, less time to throw something together if you're me. Factor has delicious flavor-packed meals to help you live life to the fullest or achieve any health goals that you may have. You can choose some keto, vegan, or veggie, calorie smart, or even protein plus options, which are all on the menu each week. Or if you're like me and you eat a little bit of everything, you can definitely mix it up. One of my favorites is actually the tomato and roasted vegetable risotto, which is actually one of the vegetarian options. Factor also offers so many nutritious options for snacking just to keep your fridge stocked. My personal favorite being the smoothies. I am a smoothie girl. I love smoothies and I love anything mango, so that's definitely my favorite. So if you're ready to cut down on the trips to the grocery store and eliminate the guesswork when it comes to what to eat, Factor definitely has you covered. Head to factor75.com or click the link in the video description and you can use my code Naomi50 for 50% off of your first Factor box. Again, head to factor75.com and use code Naomi50 for 50% off of your first Factor box. Huge, huge thanks to Factor for sponsoring today's video and now let's go ahead and get into the songs. In March of 2022, Sam Smith and Armani were sued over their 2019 duet, Dancing with a Stranger. According to Sam, the collaboration was purely a coincidence and resulted from a run-in with Normani at the studio. Dancing with a Stranger peaked at number 7 on the Hot 100 and was named by Forbes as 2019's most played song on the radio. Normani and Sam were accused of plagiarizing the lyrics and composition from Jordan Vincent's song called Dancing with Strangers. The song was written back in 2015, released on SoundCloud in 2016, and on Spotify and other platforms in 2017. The songwriters Jordan Vincent, Christopher Miranda, and Roscoe Ben Loy officially filed the complaint. In their lawsuit, they claimed, The hook and chorus in both songs, the most significant part and artistic aspect of these works, contains the lyrics Dancing with a Stranger being sung over a nearly identical melody and musical composition. Normani and Sam were named in this suit not because they performed the song, but because they also have songwriting credits. Universal Music Group, Sony Music Group, and EMI Music Publishing were also named. The lawsuit claimed the concept of the Dancing with a Stranger video had been plagiarized, especially Normani's parts. The lawsuit stated, Both videos consist of a girl performing interpretive dance alone in a minimalist studio, interspersed with shots of the male vocalist. A girl dancing alone is not an obvious visual theme for a music video titled Dancing with a Stranger, tending to dispel any notion that the similarity is a coincidence. When the extraordinary musical similarity between the songs is also factored in, it becomes even more apparent that it is impossible that the infringing composition and sound recording were independently created. According to the lawsuit, when Dancing with Strangers is slowed from 122 beats per minute to 103, it matches Sam and Normani's song. There was speculation that Dancing with Strangers was used as a reference track for Dancing with a Stranger, which would explain the similarities. Yet, the lawsuit claims Dancing with a Stranger didn't use the reference track to then make an original song. 
When the story initially broke, Sam's people declined to comment, and it doesn't seem like Normani's team did either. This is a more recent one, so even if a trial is going to happen, it doesn't seem like any of those details have been put out just yet. Personally, I listened to Dancing with Strangers a few times, and I can hear slight similarities, but I'm not sure if I would call the melody or composition nearly identical, even taking the tempos of both songs out of it. But that little dancing with a stranger part in the chorus is sort of questionable, and I know if I wrote this song and then heard Sam's, that part might have me suspecting things. But I would definitely be interested to hear what you guys think on this one. This wasn't Sam's first plagiarism accusation either. One of their breakout hits, Stay With Me, was accused of lifting the melody from Tom Petty's 1989 song, I Won't Back Down. Aside from the melody, other similarities were noted, like the chorus as being in the same key and having the same pitch and nearly identical chords. Though Sam claimed they were unaware of the song, they came to an agreement with Petty, resulting in Petty earning a credit on Stay With Me, which also entitled him to some of the song's royalties. In these situations, settling out of court or just agreeing to credit beforehand avoids lengthy and costly legal battles in which the artist might be ruled to forfeit even more money from the song. In my opinion, the similarity of melody is undeniable. The only part that might be frustrating is that Sam is forfeiting royalties because of a song they possibly didn't even know existed. But I'm sure the purpose of this is to stop more artists from copying songs on purpose and then claiming ignorance. Something similar happened to Lil Nas X when he found out the sample he bought online for $30 for Old Town Road contained a Nine Inch Nails sample. He eventually gave Nine Inch Nails a credit on the song, and it's presumed his label paid the band back royalties. Trent Reznor, the lead singer of Nine Inch Nails, said he didn't leap to sue when he was informed of the sample, but told his team to work it out without being a roadblock to Old Town Road. Still, it's definitely easier to prove an unauthorized sample than that someone stole a melody or a chord progression. In 2017, Lana Del Rey released her fifth studio album, Lust for Life. The album, of course, had Lana's normal indie pop vibe, but also had songs with heavy hip-hop, folk, and rock influences, which is also typical of Lana. Lust for Life had several collaborations, including The Weeknd, Sean Lennon, Stevie Nicks, and ASAP Rocky. It was one of Lana's solo songs on the album, Get Free, that resulted in a plagiarism accusation. In 2018, Lana tweeted to confirm Radiohead was taking legal action against her. They claimed on Get Free she'd plagiarized their 1992 song, Creep. Lana said, It's true about the lawsuit. Though I know my song wasn't inspired by Creep, Radiohead feel it was and want 100% of the publishing. I offered up to 40% over the last few months, but they will only accept 100. Their lawyers have been relentless, so we will deal with it in court. A response was released on behalf of Radiohead, stating, As Radiohead's music publisher, it's true that we've been in discussion since August of last year with Lana Del Rey's representatives. It's clear that the verses of Get Free use musical elements found in the verses of Creep, and we've requested that this be acknowledged in favor of all writers of Creep. To set the record straight, no lawsuit has been issued, and Radiohead have not said that they will only accept 100% of the publishing of Get Free. Radiohead claimed Lana copied the melody and chord progression from Creep, and therefore were entitled to at least some of the publishing. A 2018 article from The Guardian featured an analysis from professional composer Ed Newton Rex in which he compared the songs for similarities. When song plagiarism cases arise, it's common for musicologists and other experts to weigh in, and often the professional opinions are required in court. Newton Rex pointed out several chord progressions are extremely common in pop music, so hearing them in different songs doesn't denote plagiarism. However, the GBC C minor progression, the one both Lana and Radiohead use, is so rare that only 4 out of 17,000 hit songs of the last few decades have used it. In addition, when comparing the melodies, it was found a lot of the phrases in Get Free use the same chords as Creep. However, despite these similarities, Newton Rex maintained there was no proof that Lana definitively copied and actually believed it was unintentional. Still, he called Creep and Get Free the most obviously similar pair of songs he'd ever heard. Other similarities that were pointed out were the way the vocals build and Lana's This Is My Commitment, My Modern Manifesto line at the beginning of Get Free, which was compared to the I'm a creep, I'm a weirdo in Creep's chorus. After going public about the impending legal battle, Lana expressed concern that Get Free would no longer be available on future copies of Lust for Life. She said at a concert, Those sentiments that I wrote, I really am still going to strive for them, even if that song is not on future physical releases of the record. During a concert in March of 2018, Lana expressed excitement that she could now sing Get Free whenever she wanted and said her lawsuit was over. Since it never went to trial, it seems most likely both parties settled. Radiohead doesn't have a writing credit on Get Free, and Lana, along with Rick Knowles and one of her producers, Kieran Menzies, remain the only credits. 
It is important and ironic to note that when Creep came out initially, it was compared to the Hollies' 1972 song, The Air That I Breathe. Radiohead was sued by the Hollies for plagiarism, but the case was settled. When Radiohead released their debut album Pablo Honey in 1993, the Hollies were credited on Creep. So it is very ironic for them to accuse an artist of plagiarizing a song that they were also accused of plagiarizing, and not only accused, but had to share credit for the song. I don't know how I feel about this one. I've been pretty familiar with Creep before Get Free came out and didn't think of Creep immediately when I heard Get Free. But when you listen back to back, you can hear the melodies are similar. It's just hard to tell whether it's intentional, but I don't think it was intentional and I don't think it's similar enough to warrant Radiohead getting all the royalties. I also have to say that Get Free isn't any more similar to Creep than Creep is to the air that I breathe. I would even argue the air that I breathe and Creep sound more similar. Levitating was one of the biggest singles from Dua Lipa's sophomore album, Future Nostalgia. Though the song never went number one in the weekly Hot 100, it was Billboard's number one Hot 100 song of 2021. Levitating holds the record for the longest charting song for a female artist at 77 weeks. It has all the trappings of the disco pop revival that was really trending in 2020 and just now seems to be fading a little. Dua and her team have actually been sued twice for levitating with both lawsuits being filed in the same week. The first came from the band Article Sound System, who claimed Dua copied their song, Live Your Life. The second came from the songwriters of the 1979 song, Wiggle and Giggle All Night. Dua was also accused of copying the song called Don Diablo, which samples Wiggle and Giggle All Night. Live Your Life is actually a reggae song, and the band claims the intro and the chorus were plagiarized. Their lawsuit claims someone at Warner Brothers listened to Live Your Life while writing Levitating, resulting in the plagiarism and subsequent copyright infringement. Aside from Levitating's melody being similar to Live Your Life, both songs are in the same key. The band also stated the parts of Levitating that went viral on TikTok were the copied parts and could create confusion between the songs. In the case of Wiggle and Giggle, Dua was accused of copying the melody in Levitating. They claim the melody ripoff starts just seconds into the song. These similarities are noticeably less obvious. Ed Newton Rex, the composer I mentioned earlier, said he found the melody similar enough for there to be a valid case against Dua. And he is a professional, so I'm sure he knows what he's talking about. It's been pointed out that Article Sound System might get themselves into trouble for suing Dua. Simply put, it could be argued that if Levitating was determined to copy of Wiggle and Giggle all night, and that Levitating also copied Live Your Life, then by that logic, it would be fair to accuse Live Your Life of copying Wiggle and Giggle all night. But it doesn't seem like there are any lawsuits of that kind in the works, at least for now. For a successful plagiarism case, it must be proven the song was substantially copied and intentionally copied, and that the person making the accusations is actually the originator or owner of whatever has been plagiarized. In Dua's case, the main question seems to be whether she intentionally copied the melody from either artist, or if it's such a common one, especially in disco, that it was purely a coincidence. Dua and her team have been working to get the lawsuits thrown out, especially the one with Article Sound System. Technically, the suit is between Chris Cope, one of the band members, and Warner Records, Inc., but colloquially, the artist's names are used because they're typically the face of the songs. In November of 2022, Dua's lawyers called the suit vague, speculative, and devoid of a shred of factual detail. They claimed Article Sound System's suit didn't provide a theory about how or where Dua's team would have heard Live Your Life to even copy it. Though Levitating was released in 2020, Dua recorded it back in 2018, and it could have been written and arranged well before that. In addition, Dua's team argued the wording in the suit claimed Live Your Life was copied, but didn't say specifically which parts were. Though it's pretty obvious what parts the band thinks were copied, they still have to be named in the actual suit. Article Sound System is fighting an attempt to dismiss the case, claiming they submitted a report from a musicologist to Dua's prior attorneys at least three times. They also said that one of the writers who worked on Future Nostalgia is from the same town in Florida as the band, and that they were mentored by the brother-in-law of one of the band members. This could potentially explain how the similarities ended up on Dua's album as more than an unrelated coincidence. It seems that Dua, or at least her team, is still working on these cases, and these are the most recent updates. I haven't found any updates about Dua in the Wiggle and Giggle All Night suit past March of 2022. So I guess we'll have to watch and see how the suits unfold, or if they're settled, or what. We'll just have to see what happens. At the beginning of 2017, Ed Sheeran released Shape of You, which would go on to become the year's best-selling and most-played song. Quickly, listeners notice similarities between the song and TLC's No Scrubs, specifically in the melody. I'll be honest, this is one I didn't hear for a little while when the comparisons were being made. And even then, I thought nothing of it because a lot of pop songs sound similar, but not intentionally similar. 
So if you're in that boat, I've linked a genius video comparing them that makes it easier to hear. Similarities were also pointed out in the lyrics. No, I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy who can't get no love from me. And girl, you know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like me. Both the melody and emphasis on certain words in the hook are similar. Ed added Escape members Candy Burrs and Tamika Tiny Hairs, as well as their producer Kevin Briggs to Shape of Use credits. It seems like this was done amidst the comparisons, but I couldn't find any accounts of Candy or the other No Scrubs writers accusing Ed of plagiarism. However, once they were added, Candy did make a post celebrating Shape of Use success and announcing she, Tiny, and Kevin were credited. Tiny also shared a post of her dancing to Shape of You and congratulating Ed on his success. Yes, so this seems like a case where Ed heard the feedback people were giving and decided to add their credits to avoid the plagiarism accusation. I do wonder, though, if Ed was aware of the similarities before other people pointed it out, but there's no proof that he was. A grime artist by the name of Sammy Switch accused Ed of plagiarizing his 2015 song OY on Shape of You. He lost this case, though, and the judge ruled Sammy had to pay Ed's legal fees, which were in the millions. Ed said about the verdict, I hope with this ruling it means in the future baseless claims like this can be avoided. This really does have to end. Hopefully we can all get back to writing songs rather than having to prove that we can write them. He added later, Whilst we're obviously happy with the result, I feel like claims like this are way too common now and we've become a culture where a claim is made with the idea that settlement will be cheaper than taking it to court even if there is no base to the claim. It's really damaging to the songwriting industry. Shape of You wasn't the first time Ed was accused of song plagiarism. His 2014 song, Photograph, was noted for its similarities to the Matt Cardle song, Amazing. Cardle is an English pop singer and the winner of the seventh season of The X Factor UK. Photograph was called a note-for-note -note copy of Amazing, with over 39 identical notes being identified in the song. According to Amazing songwriters, over half the song was copied. When listening to the beginning of Amazing, it seems like a little bit of a reach, but when the chorus comes, it sounds almost exactly the same as what Ed did on Photograph. Thomas Leonard and Martin Harrington, who were Amazing songwriters, sued Ed and his co-writer for over $20 million in damages. The case, however, was dismissed after both sides reached an agreement and settled. So I guess we'll never know if it would have been decided that Ed did plagiarize Amazing. Honestly, I think a compelling case could have been made, but like I said, we'll never know. But I do want to include a musicologist stance on this, which was included in a Guardian article about the case. The quote comes from Dr. Joe Bennett, who specialized in music copyright. He did believe the song was plagiarized, yet he didn't think it was done deliberately. He said, Sheeran's case is most likely an example of cryptonesia, inadvertent plagiarism, when you mistake a memory for a new idea, which can accidentally slip through in the songwriting process. Bennett has also said that these accidental similarities are more common than people think, and intentional plagiarism is rarer than most people think. Bennett also referenced the case between Sam Smith and Tom Petty, reminding that these cases don't always have to end in a legal battle or other feud. Most recently, Ed is in a lawsuit for plagiarizing Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On in his own song, Thinking Out Loud. The chord progression and harmonic rhythm were considered to be too close to Gaye's 1973 single. Ed and his team have attempted to have the suit thrown out, but it was determined last September he would have to appear in court. This specific lawsuit was filed back in 2018, but a separate one was filed back in 2016. Currently, no date has been set for Ed's trial yet, but if he loses, he could owe over $100 million in damages. This case is one of the biggest plagiarism cases in recent music history. Back in 2013, Robin Thicke released his song Blurred Lines, which featured Pharrell and T.I. Love it or hate it, the song was everywhere. While the production was bouncy and happy and forced you to move, the subject matter is what many took issue with. Both the song and the music video were called sexist and misogynist, and many critics panned the song in general. Still, Blurred Lines held the top spot in the Hot 100 for 12 weeks, longer than any other song in 2013. Not only was the song nominated for two Grammys, it was also part of Miley's controversial VMA performance. Blurred Lines was heavily compared to Marvin Gaye's song, Got to Give It Up, and many, including Gaye's own family, thought the similarities were more than coincidence. The legal battle over Blurred Lines started in 2013, pretty soon after the song was released. Pharrell, Robin, and T.I.'s legal team sued Marvin Gaye's family and publishing company with the goal of receiving a judgment that there was no copyright infringement. Their legal team claimed that two songs having a similar feel or sound didn't constitute plagiarism. It soon came out in depositions that Pharrell was the main creative force behind Blurred Lines and Robin had played up as contributions to the song. In 2014, it was declared there was enough proof of possible copyright infringement for the trial to proceed. 
in 2015 the trial began. However, it was ruled gays the state's legal team could not play a recording of Got to Give It Up in court to prove their case. This is because the copyright gays the state held only covered the sheet music, not any elements added to the recording. Despite this, during the trial, Marvin Gaye's children used a mashup to prove the similarity between the two songs. They played Blurred Lines vocals over the music of Got to Give It Up and then vice versa. The gays also had two musicologists compare the songs and they found eight similarities between Got to Give It Up and Blurred Lines. The first was the signature phrase and the main vocal melodies. The second was the hooks. The third was the hooks with the backup vocals. The fourth was the core theme of Blurred Lines and backup hook and Got to Give It Up. The fifth was the backup hooks, the sixth was the bass melodies, the seventh was the keyboard parts, and the eighth was the unusual percussion choices. The key here is not that they exist, but that they were distinctive, meaning it's less likely the similarities were coincidental. The musicologist claimed, both songs have two measure phrases, which leave space in the middle of each of the bars, rhythms, and points of harmonic arrival. This is not simply an element of a genre, as it is unusual to have bass lines in R&B that leave this much space in the middle of the bar. In March of 2015, it was ruled that Pharrell and Robin Thicke were in fact guilty of copyright infringement. T.I., however, was off the hook due to his minor part in the song. Robin and Pharrell had to pay Gay's family half the royalties made from Blurred Lines, as well as a one-time payment of $5.3 million. Initially, this sum was $7.4 million. The same lawyer who represented Matt Cardle in his suit against Ed Sheeran also represented the Gay's family in their suit over Blurred Lines. The following year, in 2016, Pharrell and Robin appealed their case. In addition, over 200 artists, including Jennifer Hudson, Hans Zimmer, Fall Out Boy, and members of Earth, Wind & Fire, filed an amicus curiae brief supporting their appeal. They claimed the verdict could be damaging to the music industry, as it would punish songwriters for taking inspiration from other artists, even if it was unintentional. Despite this, in 2018, the Federal Appeals Court upheld the intentional copyright infringement verdict. One of the dissenting judges, Jacqueline H. Nguyen, stated the decision allows the gays to accomplish what no one has done before, copyright a musical style. She also claimed the verdict establishes a dangerous precedent that strikes a devastating blow to future musicians and composers everywhere. In their statement, gays children expressed the opposite. They stated, We respect the court's point of view and do not believe it will stifle creativity, as has been suggested by some, but instead it will promote originality. If an artist wants to use the work of others for inspiration, they always have been welcome to ask for permission. In a 2019 interview with Rick Rubin, Pharrell spoke more about the situation. He said it hurt his feelings that people assumed he would intentionally steal the work of another artist. He also denied the song sounding similar, but claimed they had a similar feeling, but that a feeling can't be copyrighted. For comparison, Pharrell said all salsa songs sound pretty much the same, likely implying a similar sound, even if it did exist, especially within the same genre, wasn't grounds for a lawsuit. But going back to the comparisons and the reports to the musicologists in the lawsuit, if you remember, they claimed that a lot of the similarities between Blurred Lines and Got to Give It Up weren't markers of the genre itself. One question you may be left with is where the difference lies between plagiarizing and interpolating. As I mentioned in my sampling video, interpolating is when an artist recreates part of another song themselves. They can change the melody of the lyrics, music, or words they interpolate, but they're often intended to evoke a connection to the original media. An example I've brought up before is when Frank Ocean interpolates Mary J. Blige's song Real Love and Super Rich Kids. He changes the melody of the lyrics slightly, which is normal for an interpolation. On Break My Heart, Dua Lipa interpolates the guitar melody from In Excess's song Need You Tonight. Another popular example is Ariana Grande's Seven Rings, which interpolates the lyrics and the melody from My Favorite Things. The answer is, is that even when artists interpolate, they're still expected to credit the writer and producers of the original song. Some examples include Gautier being credited on Justin Bieber's song Hold On because he uses some of the melody from Gautier's Somebody That I Used To Know. I mentioned in my Reputation video that Taylor Swift had to credit Right Said Fred for interpolating their song I'm Too Sexy and Look What You Made Me Do. In addition, Lil Nas X gave Kurt Cobain a credit for using the melody of Nirvana's In Bloom on his song Panini. Lil Nas said he wasn't even aware of the Nirvana song when working on Panini, so he came up with the melody on his own. But when he was made aware of this, he credited Kurt Cobain. This was done before Panini was even released, which avoided any legal disputes. So I'm sure this video left you thinking that plagiarism and what constitutes plagiarism is a murky territory. Because it very much is, and even with the help of experts like musicologists, even when these cases do go to court, it's not always so cut and dry.
Even still, it often leaves the question as to whether the plagiarism was intentional or just an accidental interpolation. And artists and composers and musicologists have said there's only so many ways that you can arrange certain notes and chords and melodies in a song. That doesn't mean that every idea out there has already been made into a song, but I do think that that makes it fair to say that sometimes coincidences can and do happen. Even as a content creator on YouTube, sometimes I'll open up YouTube and see that another creator has posted a video on the same topic or something very similar that I'm already working on or thinking about doing a video on. Doesn't mean that I'm copying them, doesn't mean that they copied me, it was just purely coincidental. I think a very interesting thing about a lot of these plagiarism cases is that if you have one person listen to both songs, they might think that they sound exactly alike, but if you have another person listen to the same two songs, they might think that they don't sound anything alike at all. So definitely be sure to give the songs a listen and make your comparisons and let me know what you think. Also, when it comes to these court cases, let me know if you're of the opinion of a lot of artists out there and think that possibly, you know, plagiarism getting cracked down on, so to speak. Do you think that that's going to stifle creativity when it comes to music artistry or when it comes to songwriting? And like I said, I can definitely see myself covering more cases of this in the future because there are just so many. So definitely let me know if that is something you would be interested in seeing. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter if you'd love to keep up with me there. If you'd like to become a channel member, you can click the link in the description of the video. As always, I will see you all very, very soon. I love you much. Bye-bye.